If you keep it locked away, you don't have it. It has you. Today on Growing Hope, we take the final move towards letting go by finding out ways to release the unappreciated. It's time for Growing Hope, the show determined to grow up hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. Because you are extraordinary! And now, live from a little cabin in the woods, nestled along Big Spring Creek, it's your host, Katherine Lang. Hello and welcome to Growing Hope, where we invest a few minutes each day setting the foundation for a life in purpose and on purpose. I am Katherine Lang, your resident Hope Smith and Dream Igniter. I believe when you unlock your unique purpose, you can live out your big dream goals. If you're ready, but you're not sure what is next, just check out whiteboardofworlddomination.com to get started. We all have a lot going on, and we all have a lot to juggle, and we all have a lot of stuff to maintain, and the all sometimes keeps us from the very big dream goals that we want to pursue. The stuff gets in the way. We have so much that much of what we do have is underappreciated or is unappreciated, or if we're completely honest, <laughs> it's just been forgotten because it's out of sight. Out of sight, out of mind. You don't know what you have because it's been put away. And you don't even know what you are not appreciating because it's been forgotten. As I was packing up um, for the boys to move into their apartment, I took the time to begin shuffling things around to the way I wanted them to be when I had the more space. And I started releasing things, removing things that were no longer needed or no longer wanted. And I found an iron in one of the cabinets, which is really odd because we have an iron on the back of the laundry room door that I already don't use. <laughs> So why on earth would I have two irons? And then I remembered, oh yeah, I put it up there because I wasn't using it after we moved back in after the tornadoes. And then I bought a new one because I had forgotten that I had one up there that I wasn't using. It's the same one that I had with me when I was in college that I didn't use. <laughs> so I offered it to my boys who looked at me like I was speaking a foreign language because they'd never seen me use the iron, much less know we had an iron, and they had absolutely no need for an iron. So, the iron didn't go with them, and the iron went back up into the cabinet for a brief amount of time, and then I was like, you know what? I don't iron. Why am I holding on to two irons? So, I let go of the unappreciated iron, and the underappreciated iron is still on the back door. <laughs> we, there is so much that we have. There's so much that we keep holding on to, the stuff, the circumstances, the limits. And when we hold on to this, we can't find our way to, to let go and fly. Have you ever had one of those dreams where you were flying? Most experts agree that one of the symbols that is, is demonstrated from your dreams of flying is freedom. Either you're experiencing freedom or you're in the pursuit of freedom. It is so hard to fly when you're weighted down, and it doesn't matter what is weighing you down. If you want to be able to fly, then you will have to let go. Release the unappreciated stuff. Release the unappreciated opportunities. Release the unappreciated engagements. Release the unappreciated activities. Release the unappreciated choices. You don't have to keep it. I give you permission. <laughs> you don't even have to justify letting it go. When it is unappreciated, then find it a place where it will be appreciated. Find somebody that needs it. Find somebody that wants it. Find somebody that's been asking for it. 
I, w- I participated in a challenge one time where uh, for 40 days we would give something away. And it was supposed to be something that was of meaning, but it was really easy to get in the habit of, of finding a new home for the unappreciated to match this, this particular challenge. But it was a good habit to get in. When I find something that's unappreciated, instead of just tossing it away or, or giving it to the local thrift store or trying to sell it on eBay or whatever shop you're trying to sell it on, find somebody that will appreciate it. And, and that blessing will come back as a blessing to you, sometimes in space and sometimes just in the smile that you get for giving. We all have limited resources. Limited space, limited time, limited energy. And if we put our limited in things that are unappreciated, we don't have what we need to do what we want. Don't waste what you have. Instead, let go of the unappreciated. Let go of the underappreciated. Just let go. First, release the unappreciated stuff. As soon as I mentioned that, (laughs) there's something that we all think about. All those extras that we've kept just in case. We have a box of MREs. Yes, an entire box of meals ready to eat. My my sons, all of them, have used them to, to build their emergency supply kit for one of the merit badges. But when I was reorganizing a while back, I noticed that those uh, emergency kits were just sitting there and they they were covered in dust. So I sorted through them and I pulled out the stuff that were no longer necessary or no longer needed and I began to let things go. And I found a home for those MREs. And they're still there. (laughs) Whole box of MREs. So the other day we were coming home from an event. My son was talking about an overnight camping trip that they were going, or hiking trip that they were going on. They're going to have to hike in and hike out and they have to carry their food with him. He was plotting what food he was going to take. And I was like, MRE, you're taking an MRE. (laughs) I even added that he could take extras for others because I remembered in that moment that we had the MREs and they were just sitting there unappreciated and they needed to be let go. They needed to go to somewhere that they would be appreciated. The unappreciated stuff does more harm than good because it steals the necessary from the wanted. The next thing to do is release the unappreciated opportunities. You can be good at something and you can even like something, but it if it isn't, if it's no longer appreciated, then why are you still doing it? I had a chance to write for a company and they paid me really well and it was consistent work and it was a lot of work. And some weeks and some months, they'd contact me and ask me to do other people's works because those writers didn't get their work written. Side note, if you are on time and you are, and you follow the rules, you're already a step ahead of most of the competition. Just saying. But I appreciated the opportunity I had working with this company, but eventually I began to move into a different direction. I began to build my own writing and I needed more time for that. And the opportunity they gave me was not as appreciated as it had been. And then I began meeting new freelancers and realized how much they really appreciated the opportunities that they had for writing these types of content. And I knew it was time for me to walk away from what I was no longer appreciating. Sometimes even a good thing becomes unappreciated and it needs to, we need to be okay with letting it go. The next thing to do is release the unappreciated engagements. Time spent is time gone. You cannot get it back. You cannot replace time. You have to be intentional with how you spend the time that you're given. My friend complained about an upcoming meeting. She needed to stay home. She needed to get some things done, but she had to go to this meeting. Why? I asked, and she just stared at me. You know why? And I did know why. I was just poking at her. Her grandmother had started the group. Her mother was still active in the group. 
it was not only expected, it was almost required for her to go to this event, to this group. But the more she grew and the more she expanded her opportunities, the more her path veered from the direction of this group. And yet she had to go. And she just stared at me. You know why. And I told her this. I know why you went. But do you really appreciate that time invested now? She had to reevaluate what she was doing and where she was go going. She had to ponder whether she would hold on to what was or let go of the unappreciated. You also need to release the unappreciated activities. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Because you did doesn't mean you keep on. When the activity becomes more of a burden than a blessing, then it may be time to evaluate what you're doing. It may be time to really contemplate letting it go. It can be tough to let go of an activity, especially when that activity has become part of your life and has been for a long time. You want it to still be relevant and you want it to still be beneficial and you look really hard for ways to make it so. But you grow, your seasons change, your focus adjusts, and sometimes those activities just don't keep up. You can continue to invest in the activities that don't work for you or you can find activities that do. Let go of what you don't appreciate and find what you can. And you need to release the unappreciated choices. You made the decision. You took the step. It made the difference. Now, not so much. <laughs> now you don't appreciate the moment or you don't appreciate having to make that continued choice. A good choice for yesterday is not always the right choice for your now. I made the choice to read through the Bible in one month. And it was the right choice for me at the time. It adjusted my focus and it gave me the courage to try something that others literally told me I was crazy to attempt. In all honesty, I thought I was a little off my rocker at the time. But I, I did it and it made a difference. And then my schedule shifted and it was no longer the best choice. I tried to adjust the choice to work within my new schedule, but I never could find the balance I needed. And if you're not balanced in one area of your life, you will struggle with balance in other areas of your life. So I made the choice to shift to a different direction. The original choice to read the Bible in a month was a good choice, but it became unappreciated because of the position it put me in. I adjusted my focus and my steps in order to adjust to my schedule. Releasing things doesn't always mean tossing it aside. It doesn't always mean throwing it out. Sometimes it means adjusting the fit to a new moment. You need to be determined, courageous, and open to letting, letting go of the unappreciated. And often to simply reorganize or adjust to that unappreciated or sometimes admit that it is unappreciated. The more you try to hold on, the more you hold yourself back. When I first cut the beds for my show garden, something amazing happened. Every place where we tilled, arrowheads would show up after the next rain. And by arrowheads, I mean those flint napping things that Native Americans used to make or, and still do and people still make, but not plants. This, this was actual arrowheads would come up out of the ground. It was amazing and people would come to appreciate and, and follow and dig and enjoy and it became so commonplace, we just didn't think about it. The other day, my youngest son brought home some friends, and while they were rummaging through the house, they found one of those arrowheads, and they asked me about it, and I shared the story, and they got so excited. Those boys went out on an archae archaeological in excavation, is what they called it, and they found them some rocks that looked like arrowheads, and they were excited, and they appreciated it, and I encouraged it, and I let them have it. 
because sometimes what we don't appreciate, other people are really going to desire. Let it go. It's not any more complicated than that. You don't have to love it for somebody else to love it, and and you don't have to appreciate it because someone else appreciates it. You have to be cor courageous in your choice to let it go. And courage begins with an infusion of possibility thinking. We put in courage into the heart, into the mind, into the words. And that gives us the boldness to step into our possibilities, to let go of that unacceptable, that unappreciated, that undesirable, that stuff that's not working for us. But we can't do what we need to do when we have our hands full of things holding us back or holding us down are stacked so high that we're blind to the possibilities. If you want to fly, you have to let go. You have to let go. Let go of the unnecessary. Let go of the unusable. Let go of the unwanted. Let go of the unneeded. And let go of the unappreciated. That is what we've been talking about all week. If you have um, not had the chance to listen in to all the different um, shares and points and challenges, you can catch up with me over at www.growinghoperadio.com. You can watch the episodes or you can download and listen to them at your convenience. But if you aren't making the most of it, whatever that it may be, then it is causing more harm than help. Let it go. My mother collected every local newspaper that came to her. <laughs> In the past, she would sort through the papers and she would cut out articles that mentioned or related to either friends or family. But as she got older, she couldn't keep up with it. So she would just stack the paper to the side for later. And later never came. So as I was sorting through all her things, I came up against a wall of newspaper and I mean literally a wall of newspapers I knew my mom had kept them for a reason and I had no doubt the reason had value to her but I knew that I could not invest what was necessary to bring out that value I could not appreciate and honor what she had done I offered the papers to others but they didn't see the value they didn't see what she had seen I made the intentional choice to let them go. The papers were not my mother. The papers were not even her legacy. Holding on to those papers would do nothing more than steal my resources, the same resources I needed to pursue what I was designed to do, what she encouraged me to do and to be. Holding on would have held me back from being all that I was supposed to be. Letting go didn't take anything away from her investment. It didn't take any away from, from her memory or who she was or what she did. It simply released the papers. What I choose to do and what you choose to do doesn't take away the value of our individual actions. We are all on a unique journey and the things that help me fly may be the very things that hold you down. We have to make our own way. We have to find what helps us fly and we have to let go of what doesn't. If you're struggling to find your focus for letting go, email me now, contact at growinghoperadio.com or feel free to connect with me over on social media. You can find me on the Growing Hope Radio Facebook page or you can find me on all social media as Katherine C. Lang. That's K-A-T-H-R-Y-N-C-L-A-N-G. I am convinced that you can live your big dream goals and I want to see you do it. I want to help you get there. I know that you can fly. I am Katherine Lang and I'm here to tell you that hope makes a difference. Hope makes a difference because every day holds a promise of more and every action that you take contains the power of possibility. It's not about what the world says or even what the world shows. 
the strength of hope and encouragement will and does push through the limits and the walls of the world. My prayer is and always will be that the words I share are helping establish foundations of hope that will shatter the delusions of the world around us. Until next time, remember, be blessed and be a blessing. Thank you for joining us for Growing Hope with Catherine Lang, where we are sharing hope, encouragement, and inspiration to do more. Visit www.catherinelang.com to invite Catherine to be part of your event or to share your own stories of possibility living. Until next time, remember that a seed of hope planted and nurtured will grow up into a world of possibilities.